All right, uh, Colin Murray's nine games with both the passing and rushing touchdown in 2020 mark an NFL single season record, surpassing Cam Newton back in his rookie year in 2011. His 14 rushing touchdowns that season remain a record among quarterbacks. Murray, three away from that with two games to be played. All right, Tim, let me start with you in terms of how well Colin Murray played, especially once they needed to score late to win that game. Mm-hmm. Well, he threw for over 400, oh, 400 yards, so he played great. Look, he does a good job of taking care of the football, had kind of one mistake in the game, but he was outstanding. And I think what's really impressive about him, Michael, is that, uh, you know, he's a better, you know, passer than I think people realize from inside the pocket. He really sees things well. And I think there was maybe some concern about that coming into the league with his height and all of that. But uh, he's been excellent inside the pocket. He's also been good creating. And then he's also been good in the design quarterback run game and then just creating his own offense. So, yeah, he was outstanding. And I would just also say this. I, I think we also need to look at the addition of DeAndre Hopkins and think about what that's meant for wins and losses for this football team. Yes, Kyler Murray is a young, bright star, but I, I think you can, at a minimum, say, look, there's two games that they win because they have DeAndre Hopkins that they probably don't win otherwise. That's the difference between being a playoff team or not being a playoff team. And so, uh, yeah, I think you have to look at a couple of factors between you know, making the decision to draft Kyler Murray and kind of go that direction with him and Cliff Kingsbury and then the addition of DeAndre Hopkins and what that's meant to that football team. Look, they've been impressive. Hey, Rob, let me go to the other side of the field because there was so much talk leading into this game in Philadelphia about that quarterback situation, especially when the report came out that Carson Wentz is not interested in being a backup to Jalen Hurts. And for Hurts to go out and play as well as he did, even considering they got the loss, what did you make of his performance on Sunday? Well, look, I mean, he continues to impress. In this game, he impressed me. Three touchdowns throwing, one running. So, look, if you're Carson Wentz and you're upset that you're going to be the backup, his house might be for sale right now because after that performance, um, it looks like next year they're going to have to go with Hurts. Just based on what he's done in the last two games, he's really changed the way that offense looks. They're actually driving the ball down the field. They're scoring points receivers are somehow open now. And look, I, I just think that that change up helped Hurts and Wentz. Obviously right now he's going to be upset and he's not happy with being in a backup role, but he didn't perform. And, and this, the NFL is about performance. And if you don't go out there and perform up to the standard of what they've paid you and, and what everyone expects, then when someone comes in like a young guy that they drafted high and outplays you, that's the way it is. I mean, that it happens in every team, when, when somebody's not performing, then another guy comes in and they go out there and they perform, well, then they get the job. So it, it, it looks bright. There's a bright future there um, for Hertz moving forward if he can continue to progress. But he's been very impressive for two weeks. Yeah, even if uh, Carson Wentz does not want to be the backup there in Philly, even he would have to admit the offense has looked different the last two weeks mm. with Jalen Hurts as a starter based on when Wentz had played over the last several games. Thank you for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.